every week, NFB camera crews are on the spot where things are happening, recording the varied and colorful life of Canadians. Tonight we invite you to join a film board crew with Fred Davis on another location. This is Fred Davis speaking to you from the colorful province of Alberta, known among other things for its cattle ranches, oil wells, the Calgary Stampede, and those luxurious resorts on the eastern slopes of the Rocky Mountains. Here in the capital city of Edmonton, the signs of prosperity and expansion are all around us. In this heart of Western commerce, the clear-headed, cool-thinking pioneers of industry make the decisions that help shape our country's destiny. seriously. And that's why football is our assignment for today. Right now, we're going to visit the Edmonton Eskimos. The guiding light behind this formidable club is 28-year-old Darrell Royal. Darrell hails from Oklahoma, and he's the youngest coach in the West. Actually, uh, the split T doesn't possess any mysteries that haven't been solved. 
you still win your ball games by blocking and tackling and basic fundamentals. It just happens to be a, a, the particular type of formation that we're using. Do uh, you think a non-football uh, expert like myself would have it explained? Well, uh, I've been asked that question uh, on several different occasions, mostly at, at luncheons, service club luncheons and things, but I've usually, I usually use a blackboard to explain it. This is what it amounts to. Uh, the diagram that you're looking at on the board now is of the split, uh, tight T formation. And if you'll notice, the, the linemen are in tight to each other. The guard's close to the center. The tackle is close to the guard and so on. And just above that, I'll try to draw up the uh, split T formation and try to show you how it contrasts with the standard or conventional tight T formation. Now, if you'll visualize the uh, tight T at the bottom is coming up the board with their offense, and the split T that's above will be coming down the board. Now, in the split T, you will notice that the guards are split out from the center, the uh, tackles are split out from the guards, and the ends are split from the tackles. In other words, there's splits all along the line. And that's how the name uh, split T was first given to this particular formation. Now that you've seen the split T on the blackboard, let's see how it works on the field in slow motion. And notice particularly how the line is spread out and the fact that the quarterback has the option of either running with the ball or passing it off. that same play at normal speed. By the way, this is a good time for us to meet some of the key players on the Edmonton football team. Billy Vessels, halfback, triple threat man in passing, running, and receiving. Roley Miles plays halfback, a fine broken field runner. Tommy Kwong, fullback, the China Clipper, great end, blocker. On the line, Jim Quandamateo, guard. Jim is an exceptional blocker. And Steve Mendrick. He plays back and is a vital factor in the Edmonton defense setup. Here we see him in his non-playing capacity as coach for a local high school, West Glen. Incidentally, several members of the Eskimo team give their time to training young football players thus providing a potential source of good material for future teams. But getting back to a professional team, there's more to the science of football than workouts on a practice field. Charlie, do you, uh, the Regina's been using this 6-3 just about all the way. You, you, what do you think? Their middle linebackers want The use of moving pictures has become a very important part of coaching a modern football team. And Darrell Royal is a firm believer of this. Every week, he and line coach Charlie Sharrow go over the films of recent games prior to showing them to the players themselves. Excuse me, Darrell. Uh, what exactly are you looking for in these film sessions of yours? Well, Fred, that's a pretty hard question to answer, uh, to say exactly what we're looking for. Actually, we go over the film from beginning to end, and we try to find out what mistakes we make offensively and defensively, as well as the good plays that we make offensively and defensively. And I suppose you're looking at the other team, too, to see what they've been able to pull off, eh? Yes, and uh, I might say that the teams in this league have been very successful against us in their endeavors, too. Of course, we picked up some of their stuff and added into our attack, so it's very valuable to us to go over their offense and defense because we can add it to our uh, organization. Well, uh, when you're discussing this with Charlie in a case like this, I suppose you're preparing what you're going to say and show the team. You do show these things to the team themselves, don't you? Yes, we go over the film first. We spend about four hours going over the film and uh, pick out the points that we want to stress and impress on their minds uh, and have that organized before we actually call them into the squad meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suppose uh, you use it as a sort of a disciplinary measure. Could you ball a man out if he did something wrong as well as pat him on the back if he did a good job? Well, we, uh, we try to keep from balling anyone out. We like to uh, more or less find a, find a good example to point out to him and say this is what we want and... 
and uh, point out the mistakes. Say, but we, we try to stay away from the balling out uh, point of the thing altogether. I see. What about the particular scene you were looking at when I walked in? What was that? Well, I could explain it to you, Fred, uh, a lot better on the screen if you'd like to see the play. Fine, I'd like to very much. This particular play is a quick handoff from Claude Arnold, our quarterback, to Billy Vessels, the right hand, left half back. Billy goes 85 yards on the play to score. Man, that's a terrific run. Yes, that was a very good run, Fred, but if you back it up and analyze it from the coach's viewpoint, you can, you, you'll find out exactly what we're talking about, and that it's not just what meets the spectator's eye all the time that makes a play a success. Now, we review this play and, and go back over it and see exactly why it's successful. If, you, uh, if you'd like, I'll reverse the camera and uh, uh, projector and take it back on the play and show you actually why the play was successful. Fine. Our men are in the dark jerseys here, and I'd like to point out the men that actually make the blocks that make the play go. If, if you'll notice here, the left end, Frankie Anderson, our left tackle, Leon Manley, and our left guard, Joe Blanchard. Watch three, these three men right here, and you'll see their blocks and how effective they are. And look what a tremendous hole right in here that Vessels runs through on the play. Take it on back a step further, and wonder why some of these men on the back side over here did not get in on the play. Well, look at the blocks on the other side. Now, Jim Juan Monteo was playing right guard. Look at his block. Beautiful block by Jim. Wilbur Snyder, the right tackle. And then Tom Stolhansky, our righty, and releases and comes on over in front of the play. Now, with that kind of blocking, you might say that about anyone can, can carry a ball through that hole. But if you'll notice, this man right here, number 88, in the white jersey, is not blocked. And Vessels has to evade him and run by him. So actually, every man on the team carried out his assignment to perfection, which results in a long run for a touchdown. Vessels evades number 88 and then goes on 85 yards to score. I guess that's about it, Fred, uh, except we do the same thing on every play in the entire game. And now that uh, when you finish looking at the picture, you're ready for that session with the uh, with the team, what do you call that? Well, we call it a squad meeting, and they have a little steak dinner out there uh, at one of the local hotels for the boys, and we have a, a private room there, and uh, we have our portable screen. We set it up and show them the, the picture and go over their mistakes as well as their good plays. That sounds a nice way to uh, learn something over a steak dinner. You're combining business and pleasure, eh? That's the only way we can get the boys to show up. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, thanks very much for your time, Darrell. And that brings to a close our behind-the-scenes assignment on the Edmonton Eskimo football team. This is Fred Davis, hoping you'll join us again next week at the same time when the National Film Board presents another on-the-spot Canadian story. Well, uh, Did I have your autograph? But I collect autographs. Yes, I know. Oh, but 